local, trusted. This is News 3 at 6 on KBTX. COVID-19 did not put a stop to people venturing out today for Black Friday deals. Although folks stopped at places like Post Oak Mall to do their shopping in person, reports say online Black Friday sales are expected to go up this year at a nearly 40% increase. Shoppers we stopped today say crowds were a lot smaller than usual. It has not been near as crazy this year. Uh, I feel a lot of people are probably doing a lot, a lot of the online stuff this year, so it's been a lot, lot less, not many people going on out. Reports say Cyber Monday will still take the cake, with shoppers expected to spend more than $12 billion this year online. As folks start marking things off their Christmas shopping list, local businesses are hoping shoppers think of them. News 3's McKenna Rodriguez stopped by some shops in Navasota who are working together to promote local shopping. Muddy Water Bookstore in Navasota is hoping the holidays bring in more shoppers. I have online sales also, so that's been increasing, which is really nice. Um, this month has been real tough. November's been really rough um, for all of us, all the downtown businesses. Owner Susie Lindenbank says during these hard times, local businesses are sticking together. We are always thinking, always thinking about the community, the downtown businesses, and how to help promote each other. The latest idea? If you bring a receipt from any of the other downtown businesses, the same day, we, you'll get 10% off your entire purchase from us. It's an effort Stonecroft Marketplace owner Leanne Smith appreciates. Businesses here, there is not a competition like you find in some of the small towns. It really is a collaboration. The business owners here have been terrific. Smith says they're hoping to get back lost revenue from earlier this year. Of course, this year it's even more important that we do well through the holidays so that we can just continue into next year. Both owners hope this year's shoppers will choose local. When you spend money in a small business, you're helping your town, not just that business. We can't survive without you guys. We need your business. In Navasota, McKenna Rodriguez, News 3. The city of Navasota is offering a small business giveaway. Anyone that spends more than $25 at a store can be entered into a drawing. The Brazos Valley finally has another home game tomorrow, and local restaurants and bar owners say that they're gearing up to safely serve patrons. As COVID-19 cases rise in the area, local bar and restaurant owners say they have noticed a dip in business. Because it's been a difficult year for local businesses, any sort of increase in visitors can help them keep their doors open. With tomorrow's game against LSU, they say they're hoping to bring the community in safely to enjoy the game. We're cooks or chefs by trade. Um, we're not doctors. Um, you know, uh, we're not uh, uh, law enforcement, but we're we're doing things to to practice safety. We now you know we check temperatures of employees. We have sanitation stations. We're we're making sure people have masks on. Coming up at ten, we check in with more local restaurants on how they plan to host a safe game day experience tomorrow night. And as we get closer to game day, we're going to be watching once again for the chance to see a little bit more rain, maybe even a couple rumbles of thunder as more systems continue to roll through the Brazos Valley. This has been the one today. It's a cold front. You notice it helped to spark up a lot of showers and storms across the region. For some of us, unfortunately, just wasn't the bulk of the rain as most of that has really been east and even south of the Brazos Valley. But some folks have been able to get in on a few good, decent downpours. And we will watch for the rest of this evening. You notice across our northwestern counties starting to see a few more of these showers drift on through. More rain certainly does remain possible, but it's not a guarantee that we all find rain through the rest of tonight. Your best bet, just take the rain gear with you as you are headed out. We do have some 50s starting to work in across our northern counties, so not only is it going to be rain that we'll have to watch for, but it's also a little bit more of a chill in the air, and that chill only gets a little colder as we get towards the second half of your weekend. We'll talk more about that forecast coming up in a few minutes. Thank you very much, Erica. With Thanksgiving behind us, many families are now gearing up for Christmas. News 3's Donnie Tuggle takes us to the farm patch where families were searching for the perfect Christmas tree. Neither the Grinch nor a little rain could dampen the holiday spirit at the farm patch Christmas tree lot. Jason and Constance Swanson, along with their daughter Kenley, came looking for their first live tree. We usually get a fake tree. Our fake tree, um, pre-lit tree, died last year, so we wanted to maybe start a new tradition. A new tradition that Mark Scarmando, co-owner of the Farm Patch, hopes he can keep up with. He says because of shortages, some trees are hard to get. We're going to try to get several more loads out, but but we think we'll have enough. But uh, we're, we're, we're counting on a big, big demand. A demand Scarmando says he enjoys because that means people are excited about the holidays. You know, people are ready, ready to, 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 
to spend time with their family and, and have a holiday and, and, and ready for Christmas. In a year that's had plenty of ups and downs, the Sorsen family says we could all use a little more holiday cheer and shake things up. Something new, something exciting, especially 2020. Why not switch things up and change it around? So Something for the better. In College Station, Donnie Tuggle, News 3. The Farm Patch Christmas Tree Lot is located at 853 University Drive and College Station and is now open Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. and 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. on Sundays. Seniors have their own particular set of challenges when it comes to food insecurity and nutrition. The Brazos Valley Food Bank Senior Bag Program helps aim to eliminate these challenges. They partner with other agencies that already have a relationship with seniors and know their specific needs. Shannon Avila with the Food Bank says the bags promote healthier food choices that seniors may not have access to. Senior bags are kind of um, geared specifically towards those conditions uh, with, you know, nutrition shakes and uh, low to no prep items um, that's are low sodium and low sugar to help seniors uh, live their healthiest life. Tonight on News 310, we'll show you how multiple agencies work together to meet the nutritional needs of our seniors. Here's a reminder that our Food for Families food drive is coming up next week. It's Wednesday, December 2nd. We'll have drop-off locations across the Brazos Valley. Non-perishable food items and monetary donations are accepted. While it's Black Friday, there is another kind of local seasonal shopping opportunity kicking off today. The College Station New Lions Club began selling Christmas trees at 9 this morning and will continue selling fresh Fraser furs ranging in shape and size until they're sold out. And the proceeds from the tree sales go right back into the community. It's the heart and to me that's what I love about Lions is it's truly a Lions heart. Our, our motto is we serve and that's what we sell these trees for so that we can go back and we can serve the community. The tree sale is located at the corner of Texas Avenue and W. King Cole Drive in College Station. Well, coming up, we'll check in with Erica Page on some of this wet weather. Plus, President Donald Trump is continuing to push claims of voter fraud even as his legal team loses court battles due to insufficient evidence. We've got the details next. You're watching News 3 at 6 on KBTX. President Donald Trump's legal team suffered another loss in court Friday, a day after the president repeated his unsubstantiated claims of widespread election fraud. His lawyers are vowing to take the case to the Supreme Court, even as the transition process is underway. CBS's Natalie Brand is at the White House. President Trump took in a round of golf early Friday before heading off to Camp David. Speaking to reporters on Thanksgiving evening, the president again made baseless claims. This election was a fraud. This, it was a rigged election. Friday, a federal appeals court in Pennsylvania added to the Trump campaign's recent losses, rejecting a lawsuit there. Judge Stefanos Bibas, a President Trump appointee, wrote, charges require specific allegations and then proof. We have neither here. The president also said he'll travel to Georgia, rallying voters to back Republicans in two runoff elections in January. That will determine which party controls the U.S. Senate. Maybe I'll go twice. It's very important that we win those races. President Trump told reporters he will vacate the White House on January 20th if the Electoral College formalizes the victory of President-elect Joe Biden, which it's on track to do in mid-December. From Delaware, the president-elect tweeted an acknowledgment to America's indigenous communities Friday, writing, let's commit to writing a new future together. The transition team also tweeted out a racial equity plan focused on the economy and police reform proposals. Despite the transition that's now underway, the Trump administration is trying to push forward with more regulatory rollbacks, making headway Friday to cut federal protections of migratory birds. The National Audubon Society is calling on the Biden-Harris administration to re reinstate those rules if the change goes through. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. All 50 states must certify their results before the Electoral College meets on December 14th. Challenges to vote results must be completed the week before. Well, as you're headed out this evening and maybe even as we continue on into the first half of the weekend, not a bad idea to keep the rain gear with you. We're watching for more multiple rounds of rain and storms rolling through the Brazos Valley. We'll get you another look at that pinpoint forecast. News 3 weather from the Pinpoint Forecast team is sponsored by First Financial Bank. Local bankers putting you first. And now, local weather. 
We are stepping into a soggy second half of your holiday weekend, but really if we're focusing on just the weekend itself, I think the first half of the weekend is really going to be the time where we find some of those better chances for rain because what happens is we watch a cold front come through early on Sunday and eventually that kicks all those rain chances off towards the east and it slowly starts to break through a little bit more sunshine by Sunday, though keep in mind both days temperatures are going to be a little bit cooler than where we should be for this time of the year. I think we'll end it in the upper 50s right around low 60s, so we definitely have some bigger changes on the way. We will get a small time frame where we at least have some quiet weather on hand for Monday and Tuesday, and then it looks like another system tries to slip in by Wednesday and Thursday. That may bring a brief isolated rain chance for those two days, and then we'll quickly start to dry things out as we head towards next weekend. So there are some drier times ahead, but the hope is we can accumulate some rainfall here over the next couple of days because we desperately need it here across the Brazos Valley. And a lot of folks were able to find that couple tenths of an inch of rain at least, if not a little bit more as a heavier band set up earlier today across our southeastern counties. Others, especially the further north and west you went, kind of struggled to find some of those better chances for rain. The hope is as we work in this bigger upper level area of low pressure, we can start to generate a few more of those spotty showers and give us some continued chances for rain as we step into the second half of your holiday weekend. And a lot of that is going to be thanks to this jet stream. You'll notice all of the rain continuing to follow that track. And really what this jet stream helps to do is it kind of adds a little bit more lift to the atmosphere that helps to keep the rain chance going, even though we don't have any more sunshine left to really help give us some more of what we call all that instability. You need instability to really get some good chances for rain to develop. So there you can see most of the activity sitting well south of our area, though we do have a few isolated showers continuing to stream on through this evening. So if you have your outdoor plans tonight, just kind of keep the rain gear with you. It's not a guarantee that rain will fall everywhere across the region, but I do think we will find some times where a few more of these isolated showers certainly remain possible, and we'll really have to watch for some of that heavier rain to set up through the overnight, especially across our southern counties. So for now, it's just slowly working these temperatures down. We've got the upper 50s across Leon County, mid 60s for the central portion portions of the Brazos Valley and then closer to about 70 degrees as you head a little further down towards the south. So we really don't have far to fall tonight. Mid and upper 50s right around low 60s I think is really where we're going to top off for your evening hours and then tomorrow maybe a couple of degrees. That's about the biggest difference that we'll find temperature wise throughout your Saturday. So do keep in mind it will be a relatively cooler day. We'll have some spotty showers first thing in the morning and then a little bit more of this activity starts to roll in by the afternoon, which yes, may impact some of those outdoor plans that you may have in terms of game day here in the Brazos Valley. We will have to watch for a couple isolated rumbles of thunder as we wrap up the afternoon. I'll show you one version of your pinpoint forecast and keep in mind it's probably a little bit exaggerated and what may happen, but you notice where some of those darker colors start to pop up by lunchtime and extend through the afternoon. That's where we may have some of those isolated rumbles of thunder trying to mix in as well. Some isolated rain continues through the overnight hours Saturday into your Sunday, but I really think by Sunday morning, most of the rain is starting to clear on out of here. And the hope is we can work in a little bit more sunshine by the second half of the weekend, and that will help to kind of keep things a little bit more calm as we start the upcoming week. That's as that cold front sweeps on through. Keep in mind it will be breezy both Sunday as well as into Monday just because we have a lot of these weather systems moving on in. But really it's a lot of sunshine for the second half of this forecast and temperatures still sitting well below where they should in the upper 50s right around low 60s. Umbrella and rain poncho weather for Saturday. Thank you very much, Erica. Well, up next from sports, plenty on the line tonight for high school football teams on this soggy night in the Brazos Valley, including up at Merrill Green Stadium where a playoff spot is on the line as AM Consolidated and Rudder go head to head. Looks like it's going to be a soggy Friday night of football. Howdy, Brazos Valley. We're mixing some playoff action with some games with playoff implications. Both College Station and Bryan will be on the road, and wins can improve their playoff standings. While there are six playoff games on the schedule and one regular season game with a playoff atmosphere, the Adam Consolidated football team will make the short trip to Bryan tonight to face Rudder in a District 10 5A Division II matchup. The Tigers need a win to clinch a spot in the playoffs for a 16th straight year. The Rangers need to beat Consol to keep their playoff hopes alive with one more game to follow in the regular season. The playoff implications are enough to make this a must-see game, but add to that also a matchup against the crosstown rival.
The kids are excited about that, and what I'm real proud of them, I told them, you know, this is a big game, and I, I've already had seniors tell me, Coach, it's about how we play. It ain't about our opponent, and that's what I've always talked to them about. These kids have grown up playing each other in little leagues and all kinds of things. They all seem to know each other, and so uh, it, it's a big rivalry to have a chance to go out and prove who's the best in the Brazos County. A&M Consolidated beat Rudder 25-14 last season. Tonight's game will kick off at 7.30 at Merrill Green Stadium. As for our playoff matchups, Navasota will be in Giddings tonight to take on Navarro. It's the first time in four years the Rattlers have made it to the regional round. Navasota rallied to beat Rockport Fulton 39-34 last week, and they did it without their starting quarterback, Jamar Jesse, and running back, Darius Randall, who left the game with injuries. Both will be game time decisions tonight. Head coach Casey Dacus says Navarro is a team that likes to run the ball, and stop the run, so Navasota will have to stay ahead of the chains. They're going to be tough. I mean, anytime you get past the really the, after the first round, it it starts getting a lot harder, right? Real fast, you know, right away. Uh, but you know, we expect them to be big and physical. They run a slot T on offense. And anytime you play a team that's slot T offensively, then they believe in physicality. And so we've got to match that tonight, and uh, we got to be able to stand up to their phys their physicality, basically. Navasota Navarro set to kick things off at 7 o'clock tonight over in Giddings. In Austin this afternoon, 15th ranked Iowa State battling number 17 Texas with a chance to clinch at least a share of the Big 12 regular season title. Third quarter, Texas adds to a three-point halftime advantage. Sam Ellinger hits Jared Wiley seven yards on the touchdown pass. The Longhorns lead it 20 to 10, but Iowa State has a comeback. Cyclones down three with less than two to play. Brees Hall scores from three yards out. Iowa State takes their first lead of the game at 23-20. Texas with a chance to tie the game as time runs out in regulation, but Cameron Dicker's 57-yard field goal was no good, and Iowa State gets a big win. They beat Texas 23-20. Got one early high school football score to pass along. Snook losing to Chris Stovall 56-6 this evening. It'll be one of many games that we're going to talk about during Big Game Friday night, as well as looking ahead to Saturday's football game over at Kyle Field against LSU. And we're going to be keeping close eyes on the weather, not only tonight, but into tomorrow, especially because we know we got a lot of events happening across the region to include football. And we will be watching for the potential of another one to possibly even two inches of rain to fall here across the region. And the thing that we'll have to really kind of keep a closer eye on tomorrow, it's not necessarily just the rain, but the fact that we may have a little bit of lightning trying to mix in there as well, especially by the afternoon and evening time frame. So just keep that pinpoint weather app with you, have it downloaded. We've got a lot of changes here happening with the weather over the next 24 four hours. The good news is that cold front that comes through by the second half of the weekend that clears all the rain on out of here, brings back the sunshine and at least some cooler temperatures. And if you're looking to find a time to start hanging the outdoor Christmas decorations, I advise waiting after the weekend and hold off till this upcoming week because I think we'll find some good days out there uh, to really get some of those decorations hung safely. I know we desperately need the rain. It'd be nice if it took a break for a little while during all the football game activities yeah. in the afternoon and evening. That's our report for now. Thanks for joining us. Hope to see you back here tonight at 10. Y'all at Santa's Wonderland. The Highway 6 just north of Houston, just south of Aggie Land. We're turning on a gazillion lights and we're striking up the band. Have a merry Texas Christmas, y'all at Santa's Wonderland. A Texas Christmas experience open nightly through December 30th in College Station.